Hey, howdy, how's it going? So we're back with the, uh, you know, Batman, 1989 Tim Burton Batman cards, the promotional whatever that's kind of like a novelization. So I'm just, I'm on card 20. We're gonna, I think we started off with the, uh, or we left off with the opening scene from Batman. So I'm, I'm just gonna get to reading, but I actually watched a little bit of the movie, only like half of the movie, um, just kind of because I wanted to again. And one of the things that I actually noticed that was interesting about this time through is the all the news reporters and everyone, they're all like, you know, Gotham City has this new Batman who's in town, you know, blah, blah, blah. Batman at the beginning of the movie, he's scaring those criminals. Tell me about your, you know, tell your friends about me, you know? So it's kind of like, an origin but you don't see any of his training leading up to him becoming batman like you do in batman begins the christopher nolan movie um but it's interesting because you just see him showing up as batman you know this is his unveiling batman to gotham city which is pretty cool so anyways here we go <clears throat> the new da setting the gotham city democrats club Mayor Borg introduces the new district attorney, a young, courageous lawyer named Harvey Dent. Dent tells his guests that he intends to crack down on crime. Commissioner Gordon is targeting businesses suspected of fronting for the syndicate in this city. Within one week, we'll knock down their doors and shed the light of the law on that nest of vipers. Thunderous applause. At the end of a large table, we notice a single empty place setting and an engraved place card which bears the name Bruce Wayne. Knox on the job. Alexander Knox is a crime reporter for the Gotham Globe. A damn good one. For the past few weeks, he's been tracking a most unusual story. Knox on the phone. Lots of punks in town are scared stiff. They say he drinks blood. They say he can't be killed. Phone voice. What are you talking about, Knox? Knox. I'm talking about the six-foot bat that's loose in Gotham City. What else? The setup. Two ruthless evil men. Gotham crime boss Carl Grissom and his top lieutenant, the wily, sardonic Jack Napier. I want you to handle this operation personally, Grissom hisses. He's referring to the Axis Chemical Company and their plan to break in, trash the office with make, trash the office, make off with the books, and call it industrial espionage. Jack is uneasy. He doesn't suspect that the plan is actually a setup with himself as the fall guy. Grissom's been tipped off that Jack is having an affair with Grissom's beautiful girlfriend Alicia and seeks revenge. Bruce Wayne in Manor. Bruce in Wayne Manor. It's casino night at Wayne Manor, a fundraising party attended by Gotham's power, power elite. Mostly Bruce Wayne tolerates these trendy intrusions into his privacy, although longtime friend Commissioner, Commissioner Gordon is always a valued guest. Wayne, breaking away from the crowd, strides through his private armory, past the various warrior figures displayed that inspired, at least partly, his design for the Batman costume. Bruce is at home here, in the darkness, the clear, crisp echo of his footsteps filling the hall. And then he hears voices. Meeting their host. Alexander Knox and Vicky Vale, guests at Wayne Manor's big charity ball, wander deeper into the mansion while searching for Commissioner Gordon. They find themselves in the armory, agog at exotic weapons and imposing warrior figures. Finally, the young lord of Wayne Manor emerges from the shadows and, in, and introduces himself. Vicky is charmed, impressed. Knox suspects that there's more to this enigmatic millionaire than meets the eye. View from the Batcave. We're observing one screen and a whole vast bank of video monitors, a control center revealing everything that happens in Wayne Manor. 
Images of Knox and Vicky speed by on videotape before Bruce settles on his objective. Police Commissioner Gordon, a casino night guest, is interrupted by a patrolman and rushes away in a huff. Why? Bruce plays back their quick conversation. Patrolman. Anonymous tip. Napier's cleaning out Axis chemicals. Gordon excited. Good lord. If we could put our hands on him, we'd have Grissom. The Axis Chemical Factory. A tattered sign reads, Axis Chemical, the future is now. A metal sluice gate rises. <laughs> A metal sluice gate lies just beyond, dumping tons of churning toxic waste into Gotham City's East River. Outside, a van pulls up. Jack Napier and his criminal allies quickly disembark. With a certain slimy finesse, they take out a security guard and invade Axis Chemical. They are the first of several violent, unexpected visitors this night. Mysterious Manhunter Criminals are a superstitious, cowardly lot. My disguise must be able to strike terror in their hearts. I must become a creature of the night. Dark. Terrible. A bat. That's it. It's an omen. I shall become a bat. Bruce Wayne's sighting of a bat outside his window gave him the inspiration to become the most feared cr crime fighter in Gotham City. The driven millionaire is literally transformed every time he dons the meticulously crafted, state-of-the-art battle gear he designed for himself. Batman's Weapon Setting, the Axis Chemical Company. Four hoods scuttle across, scuttle across the elevated walkways. And then, Batman drops onto the catwalk from above. For a moment, the startled crooks gape. Then one of them takes off down the walkway. Another turns and trains his gun on the Dark Knight detective. With lightning speed, Batman goes to his belt for a miniature spear gun type weapon and fires. Planting a barbed hook in the gunman's jacket, spinning him around, the shaken crook drops his crook drops his weapon, slips and topples over the railing. Toxic flood. It's mayhem and madness at Axis Chemical as Commissioner Gordon and his officers invade the already besieged factory. Jack Napier, looking for an exit, spots a bunch of cops coming up after him. He grabs a nearby axe and runs over to a pair of steel containers with Danger, Highly Toxic written on them. With a powerful swing, he smashes the containers, releasing a river of wildly colored poisons. The officers retreat hastily, bumping into each other as the poisons flood toward them. A satisfied Jack on the other side of the chemical moat throws away the axe and climbs the stairs to temporary safety. In the Batman's Clutches A desperate Jack Napier reaches the catwalk. A few yards beyond is an impossible drop to the swirling black currents of the East River. And freedom! Napier goes for it, begins climbing the catwalk railings, just as Batman hur hurtles in and puts him in a wrestling hold. Jack's astonished. What he, what's he grappling with? <laughs> Commissioner Gordon hostage. Hold it! A voice calls out to Batman. The voice belongs to a wily criminal named Bob, one of Napier's crew. He's got a gun pointed at Commissioner Gordon's head. Let him go or I'll do Gordon! Reluctantly, the Dark Knight detective releases Jap Jack Napier and stands a few feet away. Jack, perversely vain as always, straightens his clothes and fixes his hair. Then he smirks at Batman. Nice outfit. Holding the Batman at bay. Jack Napier spies a 30 automatic abandoned on the catwalk and grabs it. He correctly deduces that Eckhart, one of his criminal crew, conspired with boss Carl Grissom to set him up. After a few heartfelt words, he fires. Eckhart falls dead. Then he aims the gun at Commissioner Gordon. Batman advances. Jack spins, and their eyes meet for a second. A questioning look crosses the Dark Knight's face. 
Can this be a spark of recognition? Hero and the Horror. A small smile plays on Jack Napier's lips, and then he fires point blank at Batman. The Dark Knight detective swings his heavy cape. The bullet ricochets directly back at Napier. An unholy scream of pain echoes out from the catwalk above. Napier reels and staggers, clutching at his face. Blood gushes between his fingers. From between the fingers. <laughs> he staggers into the railing and topples over, just managing to grab hold of the lowest rung. Directly below him is an enormous basin full of bubbling toxic waste. Jack loses his grip. Batman leaps on... Batman leaps on the catwalk and tries to grab Jack's hand. Napier drops, but manages to catch himself on a pipe. He's slipping fast. The Dark Knight reaches out, but gets a poor grip. He stares confounded at the stricken, oddly familiar expression in Jack Napier's eyes. Then Jack slides out of Batman's grasp. Plunge into toxic oblivion. Batman watches in horror as Jack Napier slips from his fingers. The mad killer plunges a full two stories down into the enormous catch basin of bubbling poisonous, poisonous toxic waste. Jack screams all the way, an ungodly howl of fear and pain. It's all over for Jack Napier, or is it? Rising above it all, Commissioner Gordon Hoping the, capture, hoping the capture of Jack Napier might lead to the arrest and conviction of crime boss Carl Grissom, is furious that Napier is dead. Batman, meantime, waves away the toxic smoke rising from the catch basin, Jack Napier's hellish resting place. Still stunned by the encounter, he can't place Jack, yet he knows he must. Spotted by Commissioner Gordon. Several police officers train their weapons on Batman. A couple of them appear at either end of the catwalk, pretty much blocking his escape. Batman takes in the development, hands on his utility belt. Hold it right there, shouts Commissioner Gordon. Batman raises his hands in a gesture of surrender as the cops advance from both sides. Then he flicks two tiny capsules at the nearby wall. It's a blinding flash of light and color, a wild pyrotechnic display. The officers fall backward, dazzled and disoriented, as a thick wall of smoke conceals the Dark Avenger from view. They fire wildly into the curling cloud, but their efforts are useless. Batman has already made his escape. Front page story. All over Gotham City, the astounding news is spread. Someone roams the rooftops. Someone watches over us, swooping down on injustice with the elemental power of a night creature. Soon, children will cheer his name. Soon, the underworld will feel his fury. The Batman has arrived. Da -da 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 -da. Anyways, that was card 38. So, I can't remember how many there is total, like 120 or something like that. Anyways, we'll do another one in a next time but yeah i another thing that i actually noticed real quick before we go is it's such a something that's easy to forget is this batman symbol was just for promotional material it's not the symbol that's on batman's chest on his actual bat suit the one that he has this tail goes down a little further and has like an extra little kind of it you know it's not as <laughs> i'm like rubbing my nips on here anyways it looks different i'll pop one up right there but anyways it's just kind of something that is easy to forget you know especially since this symbol is so synonymous with michael keaton's michael keaton michael keaton's batman um tim burton's batman however you want to look at it but yeah anyways Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do some more next time. So have a good night. Peace be with y'all.